Hey, happy Friday. Welcome back to another Friday Tech Workshop. I'm Joseph, a senior developer advocate with AppSmith. And in today's workshop, we're going to build a starter template for integrating with the OpenAI Assistant API. So you can either follow along and build your own app or just copy the finished app from the link in the description and then add your API key and connect to your own custom Assistant API. So we'll also go over the differences between regular chat GPT, a custom GPT, and the OpenAI Assistant and why you might wanna use the Assistant API instead of one of those other GPT options. After that, I'll show how to create an API key in OpenAI and then save that as an authenticated data source in AppSmith so that you can securely use the API and not expose the credentials. Then we'll go through creating each one of the APIs to create a thread, add a message to the thread, run the thread, and then get the results back from the assistant. So let's get started. First, let's check out the differences between ChatGPT, a custom GPT, and the OpenAI Assistant. All right, let's check it out. Okay, real quick before we get into building the app, I just want to point out a few differences between ChatGTP, a custom GPT, and then the OpenAI Assistant. So it makes sense why you would use the Assistant API, uh, which we're going to do today. Um, so starting with the easiest approach here, if you use regular ChatGTP, you can put in a custom prompt here and you can upload a file, but it's gonna be pretty much the same response from one person to the next or one time to the next if you use the same prompt in the same file. Uh, it's not really dialed into your use case or customized for your job or whatever. So you can add some customization to the uh, regular chat GTP. Right here under Customize, you can add some extra um, instructions here, but this is going to apply to every conversation. So you can turn it on or off, um, but if you want you know, different versions, you'd have to come here and edit this every time. So it's, it's a little bit of customization, but the next step up then is to create a specific, like a dedicated uh, custom GPT. So this will let you have multiple uh, separate ones for different use cases. Each one has a different set of instructions uh, when you go to configure here. So you put in the instructions here. Uh, you can upload different files for each one and enable or disable these capabilities per custom GPT. So that's a lot more uh, specific to your use case because you can have one for helping you write a blog post or one for helping with homework or whatever it is. Um, but no matter how much you customize it, it's going to look the same and it's going to be inside the chat GTP website. So, um, if you wanted to embed this in your website or in a mobile app, or if you want to add like extra buttons or interface or whatever, that's where you have to use the assistant. So the open AI assistant, it's very similar to this custom GPT here. Uh, you still put in a prompt and upload files. Actually, we'll just switch over to that here. So here's creating an assistant now. Um, and from here, it's you still can upload files. You can still uh, create functions and all these different options that are in the custom GPT, but you can access this through the API now. So if you want to embed it in your website, uh, use it in a mobile app, create a, a custom interface for it, you, you want to start here and create an assistant and then integrate with it through the API. So next we're going to check out the API docs and just see the steps involved before we start building the app. And I think it'll make a little more sense as to um, all of the different APIs that are involved if we just walk through it here first. So the first step is to create a thread. Um, and to do that, you'll see that we need the API key. And then there's no data in the body here. So we're just gonna send a post request to this threads endpoint, and that will respond with a thread ID. And once you create a thread, there's nothing in it yet. It's just a placeholder. It's, uh, it gives you back a thread ID, and then you keep using that ID to add messages and run the thread and get the responses. So next we'll look at the messages section here. And we want to create a message, and then you'll see that we need that thread ID. 
So first, um, we'll create an API key, use that to create a thread, and then create a message adding it to that thread using its ID. And then you'll see the data here. It's just an object with uh, one property of the role, so who's speaking. And it starts out with user, you're adding a message, and then your content. And then you want to see a reply from the assistant. So if you go to list messages right after you've added one, the data you get back, it's going to show uh, your message, your role of user, and the last message that you added. And that's not going to change until you run the thread. So you have to create a thread, add a message to the thread, and then you have to create a run. So if you go to the run section here, there's create run. And again, you need the thread ID. So it all starts with creating that thread and getting the ID, add a message to that thread, run the thread. Now, if you look at the response here, you know, it's just some data points about it, but there's no actual response message. So running the thread does not return the message. You have to run it, which takes time. It's going to operate in the background. And uh, just like when you're on the website, it starts responding instantly. Like as soon as you hit enter, it's it, like it's almost like it knew the answer ahead of time and starts typing. But it streams. You know, it doesn't have the full answer right off the bat. And you'll see that when you add a message and you run it, if you check for messages again, uh, First, it'll still be your message. That's the last one. And then you check a second later, and now it's the assistance message, but it's still responding, right? So then you have to just keep listing the messages back to the uh, messages section here. And you'll list the messages, and you'll see user, and then list it again, and now it's assistant, but the response isn't done. So that last check, uh, listing messages, you either have to keep clicking the button or write some JavaScript to run it on a loop. So we'll, if we have time, we'll get to that at the end. Uh, but basically, we want to create a thread, get that ID, and then add a message to the thread. So create a message using that thread ID, run the thread, and then list the messages uh, repeatedly until that value is there and it's ready. So let's start out with creating the thread. Um, Back here, and I'm going to copy this curl request. And then we will go to a blank page of the app, add a new query, and I will use the new curl import. So just paste that in here, and then you can import this and try to run it. Now, I don't have the API key yet, but let's go ahead and import it. And this should be a post for create thread. All right, and if we run this, I'm going to get an unauthorized because I don't have an API key here. So let's go create an API key. So in the uh, dashboard for OpenAI, go to API keys here and create new. Call this assistant. Create a key. And then I'm going to copy this and put it in place of this placeholder. And if we run this again, now we have a 200 response and a thread ID. So I can take this thread ID and use it to add a message to the thread. I'm going to first start out and add a input here. So we have somewhere to type in our message. Um, and then we can type in here and pass that to the API and add a new message from this. I'm going to make it a multi-line here. and. Uh, Turn off the auto height just so we can really spread it out and have room to type in it. OK, so we have an input where we can type a message now and send that. And we've got the one API to create a thread. Uh, so we need another API to add a message to the thread. But before we do that, this is a good time to save this API as a data source. So we, ha we have a working API. Uh, we've got the API key here, and we're getting back a response. So now I'm going to save this as a data source. And we'll call it OpenAI. And I like to put my name on it. When you're working with a team and lots of people can create a data source, uh, just so you know who owns it and whose API key it is. So I'm going to save this data source. Um, but I'm going to move this header. Instead of it just being a normal header, 
we can use that as a API key here. Uh, it's gonna still attach it to the header, but notice how this value field is encrypted and this one is not. So we'll cut the key from here and just get rid of that header. I'm gonna put that in here. And this has a separate place for the prefix. So we'll just move that over here. And the key is authorization. Just like in the regular header, only we're moving it to the authentication section of the data source, putting that key into an encrypted field so that it gets saved on the AppSmith server and it won't be in the app definition. It won't get loaded into the end user's browser. Um, so this key will only be used on the server directly to, uh, to OpenAI server. So let's double check this. I think that looks good. We're gonna save it and retest. Make sure that now you don't see the header, but it's got the inherited ones. Um, and it doesn't even show you the authentication header, the one that's encrypted. It doesn't show it at all here, but it is there. So let's see, it still works. We're, uh, we're still authenticated and getting back a new thread ID. So now, now that it's saved as a data source, you see the blue bar across it here. Um, we can add new APIs to this data source and they'll all get the same headers. So that authentication will already be there. So the first one, I used the curl import, added the API key, saved it as a data source, and now every other API, I'm going to create as a new one under that data source. So for creating the message, we wanna add a message to the thread now. We'll get everything after the .com here. And this thread ID is gonna come from this other API. So we can reference it right here. Just add another set of curly braces and then I can uh, get the name, create thread.data.id. And so that's inserting that ID from the last thread that was created. I'm gonna go ahead and name this while I'm here. So this is uh, create message. And then in the body, we'll set this to JSON. And this takes an object with a role, which should be user. And then I think it called it content. Let's double check. Yeah, so I need this object, role is user, content, and then whatever you want. And that's gonna come from that input that I just added. So I'm gonna wrap this whole thing in curly braces so that I can use JavaScript anywhere. And you can also put it only around the one thing, like right here, um, but I like putting it around the whole outside, so I only need one set of them. So I'm gonna reference that input dot text, and it is empty right now. Um, so let's go put something in there. And we'll just say, help me write an email. Um, so we'll go back to the query, run it. Okay, bad request. Let's see, what did we miss? Oh, it's a git. Um, got to make that a post. Okay, so we got a 200 response. And this time... Um, I got back a different ID. This is to the messages endpoint instead of the thread. So you can see it starts with a message there for the ID. Um, but this is just added our message. So if I try to list messages now, it's not going to actually have anything new, but let's go ahead and get that API next. So list messages, we'll get everything here. And this time it's a git. So we'll add another API under that data source. And again, referencing that same thread. So that's coming from the create thread API. And this is list messages. Okay, let's test this out. And so that's working, we're getting back messages. Uh, so there's the data array, and then you go to content, and this is an array. And you can see my message, and that's it. There's nothing new yet.
And that's not going to change until you run the thread. So the last API then that we need, let's go back to the docs here. We want to create a run. We get the rest of this endpoint. Add one more API here. And this is a post as well. Okay, and reference that thread ID. Now, if I run this, that's telling it to evaluate the thread. It looks like I got an error though. Let's see, what is it? Assistant ID, that's right. Um, this one needs a body telling it what assistant to use to run the thread. So when you create the thread and when you add the message, it doesn't care about what assistant yet. It's when you actually run it that you have to tell it what assistant to use. So this is a good time for us to stop and create that assistant. We'll get the ID, put that in here, and then we should be able to run this thread, um, see a response back and, and have pretty much the whole thing working. And then we'll just need to build a UI and uh, automate that checking for, for the response. So back to the assistant. Uh, I'm going to create a new one, create a new one, and we'll call it assistant test. And I've got a prompt here I want to use. So real simple use case. Um, there's so much more you can do with this by attaching files and everything, but I just want to show how to build the API part and make a real simple starter template that anybody can copy for the API side. Um, so for this use case, real simple, I'm just saying your job is to help somebody write a more professional email and respond with uh, you know whatever they type and just make it sound more professional. So that's really all you need to do. Uh, this is created now. Uh, I've got a prompt in there. So I'm copying this assistant ID and let's look at the API docs again. That was the one thing I was missing there. When you go to create the run in the body, there's one property called assistant ID, and then you put in that key. So back here. And let me double check that. Oh, underscore. So this should run the thread using this new assistant. And that worked. Now I got a run ID. You don't actually need this one. We have to use the thread ID again to list the messages. So let's go back here, run this again. And there it is. Um, so it's written something new now based on that input. So let's test it with a new message. I'm gonna go back to the UI and uh, Let's make like a fake email, like we're checking on a, a project from somebody. Do tomorrow. All right, so if you're a little short with your email and you type it like this, let's see what it gives us back. So I want to add that message. Um, and you can see here it is, create message. It's pulling it from that input. And then there's the text I just typed. So we're going to create the message. I'm running the create message. We want to run the thread so it'll reevaluate. Because if I check the messages right now, it won't really respond yet. Um, and then we don't need to do the create thread. That's uh, we're still on the same thread. So we'll list the messages. status of the project. Yeah. So there it is. So we've got everything working on the API side and now we need more of an interface for it. And then we'll look at automating that check. All right. So we've got an input to type. Um, let's make a run button. So you're done typing and you want to add that message to the thread. On click, we'll run the create message. And then if that's successful, you want to run the thread. 
as soon as you add a message to the thread, every time, just rerun the thread. And that create run, let's go look at that API again. Create run is just going to take the ID from the thread that's already started. So when the app first loads, um, we need a thread ID before we can add a message. Now, I don't want to put a button up here and make the user have to click create thread just to start typing. So we can tell create thread to run on page load because it doesn't need any other data yet. It doesn't take an input from the user. So I'm going to have create thread run on page load. And then as soon as the page opens, I should have an ID already, which means I can create a message because that ID will be there. And then as soon as the message gets added, we're running create run. So the only thing left then is to check for the messages. Uh, this button is going to chain together creating the message and running the thread. Then we'll add a button for checking for the response and a place to display the response. And I'm going to use a rich text editor because um, I think it could work with the markdown response. It might be a little more formatted. All right. So when you click this button, we want it to uh, list messages again. And then right here, the content for this editor, um, let's set the default content to that reply from list messages. So I'm gonna go look at the path. Um, list messages, we're going to an object dot data. And then inside there, it's content. Um, oh, data's an array. So data zero and then content zero. It's a little nested. Um, and then we want text value. So back here, we want to display the list messages dot data zero, right? Data dot data. And then go to the first record dot content, which is another array. Go to its first record dot text, which is an object, and value, which is the final string. There it is. OK, so this is not marked down. Uh, in this case, it's giving us back plain text. But if your assistant is responding in markdown, you can set the rich text editor here, um, set its display type to markdown, and then that'll help display the extra formatting. So. Almost everything's working now. I'm going to refresh. We'll start from scratch, test this out. And then I think the last thing is to automate checking for the response on a loop. So when I refresh the page now, we're going to lose uh, the entire conversation history. Uh, the input here is reset. And I should have a thread ID. Um, so this is going to run on page load. I've got an error here, though. Oh, yeah, because there's no data to display in the rich text editor. Um, but this. This is set to run on page load, so there's an ID in the background there waiting to be used. I'm going to go ahead and deploy this, and we'll use uh, the deployed version of it now. So um, how about want to do lunch tomorrow? And let's see. We'll add that message to a thread. So the thread ID gets created on page load. This added a message to the thread and then immediately runs the thread. And now we're checking for a response. And uh, yeah, it didn't add much more, but it made it sound more professional. So using that approach, you can tie these APIs together, define your own custom assistant, uh, probably a lot more instructions than my simple use case here. But uh, the point is to kind of show the API side and how to connect everything. So. The last piece now that I want to do is instead of clicking add message and it runs the thread automatically, but then you have to keep checking for a response. I want to automate that part. So let's go back to the editor. And I need a function that will run on a loop and check to see if there's anything in 
basically this same path right here. The thing that we're trying to display, um, if that's not there, then it should be, of well, actually two things. It should be from the assistant and it should have a uh, zero dot content, you know, record zero dot text dot value. So it's pretty nested. Um, but the way that it responds, it puts the most recent uh, message at the top. So the zero index, it's going to be yours until the assistant's done replying. And now the, the zero index is going to be the assistant one. So I'm going to copy this path because I'm going to need it in a minute. We're going to use that as um, part of the condition to check in the loop to see if that value is there. So let's go back to go uh, create a new JS object. And we're going to use an async function. And we want to check it. So I'm going to use like every three seconds, um, just so we're not hitting the API too often. It takes at least two or three seconds um, at a minimum. And then if it's not there, we'll wait three seconds and just keep checking. So the first thing I want to do is get a function that just shows an alert every three seconds, just so I know that part's working. Um, and then we'll add our logic to that and tell it where to exit and just have it keep running that list messages function. So first thing I want to do here is set an interval. Now this takes a callback function as the first parameter, the interval, number of milliseconds, and then an ID. So we will have an arrow function here. I want to do it every three seconds. And for the ID, I'm just going to call it timer. We need the name. That's an optional parameter, but you need it if you want to be able to cancel the timer, which we're doing. Um, so then Let's see, let's put these parameters down here. All right, so here's the function that we're going to run every three seconds. And I'm just gonna say show alert that it's checking for results. And we'll use a uh, info. And if I run this, So every three seconds, it's just going to keep saying checking. And then that goes away three seconds later, right? So I'm going to refresh this because there's no way it's going to stop right now. OK, so now we need some way to exit this loop. Um, I'm going to put in running the API as well to, to check for the results. Um, so the, let's look to see if there's anything there. And I actually, I think it's going to work better if we get a response queued up. Um, So we will add this, and then check the messages here. OK, so the last one is assistant now. There it is. So there's the longer, more professional request. And so I want to make sure that it's in this state, that the last message came from the assistant and that there's something in the value. So back to the JS now. If that's true, uh, then we want to cancel the timer and exit this loop. So let's put that at the top, actually, the condition. Um, and the first time it will be false, at least, maybe more than the first. So if something's true, I'm just going to put a placeholder here of true. If something is true that that value's there and it's the assistant, then we want to clear the interval, which is called timer. Um, and I think that's it, actually. So the place that we want to run it is outside this if. Um, once we meet the condition, then, then we can clear the timer, and that's it. It'll stop running this function. So if this is false, then it's going to show the alert and await running uh, get messages or list. There it is, list messages.run. And to await this here, I have to make the arrow function async as well. OK, so we're almost there. Um, the thing is, 
the condition that goes right here. Let's look at the binding right here for the rich text editor. <clears throat> so this is the value that I'm looking for. There's uh, the query itself has its dot data. And then the response, it also has a nested property called data. Then we go to the zero index of that to the content, zero index there, and then text.value. So this is what I'm checking for. Um, and there's also the role. So right here, I wanna check to see if that message is actually from the assistant yet, and uh, if there's anything in it, if it's empty or not. So I wanna check each one of those separate. We'll say const role equals list messages dot data data go to the zero record and there it is there's dot roll so we'll figure out what that is uh, and then the other thing is is there a response is there any data in it so const response equals list messages dot data data go to zero and then this has that content array and inside there, we want to look at the text value. So each one of these things, uh, it's going to be checking what the role is. And here it's going to look to see if there is any text. And then right here, I can use those uh, to create that test. So if role equals assistant. And then the other thing I want to test is that there, there is a response. Um, so here it's just, is there a value there or not? And I think that should do it. Let's, um, let's see, start from scratch here and see if it actually exits the loop, uh, if it runs the list messages each time on, on a loop, and then if it clears itself. So back to the UI here, let's uh, refresh so that there is no message or thread or anything. Um, let's see. So we will add the message. Oh, and I, I didn't connect the third step here. Um, so when I click the button, it'll add a message to the thread. It'll run the thread. And then on this third level of the callback here, um, I can just have it run my JS object function right here. So run that function. And I think we're ready to test it. It added the message, uh, three seconds. Do we get a pop-up? No, it didn't actually run. Let's see, let's look at that third level here. I think maybe I need to put this inside of an arrow function. see what that does. So add the message. It's going to have two of the same messages on the thread now, but it should still work. And nothing. Okay, I'm going to try putting the alert and the API first. And then we check the condition and decide whether or not to exit. I think that's it. So this way it'll always run it at least once. Um, we want to list the messages, check to see if there is a role uh, that equals assistant and if there's any kind of response. And here I'm just inverting it uh, to make something that's truthy, false, and then actually true. Um, so let's see what happens now. Go back here. I'm going to refresh it just so I start a new thread. And this should run the first two APIs and then call up my JS object. There it is. So three seconds and there it is. Yeah, it already uh, reworded it. Cool. So it took uh, one check basically. Uh, the first one wasn't there and then three seconds and it ran again. So just walk through all of it again real quick. Um, you create the thread, add a message to the thread with uh, create message, and then you run the thread and then on a loop, you got to keep running that list messages. And so all those are tied together with this button and that JS object. Um, so you got the first action on the button here that creates the message. The on success runs it once, runs the thread. And then its callback 
is my JS object that handles the whole loop. And so that will keep checking every three seconds until that condition's met, and then it clears the interval. So let's test it out one more time now that we got everything working. Put in a prompt here. It should run the first two APIs and then keep running that last one. There we go. That was really quick. So this is a pretty simple use case uh, as far as the assistant itself. There's so much more that you can do with uh, the particular assistant that you set up. But this app will let you easily connect to the API. Uh, you can just fork this app or rebuild what I did here in the video, create those four APIs and enter your key, and then you can start integrating with your own assistant API and add anything else that you want to the UI now. You can use any one of our data sources to connect and pull in other data. Um, you can build charts or whatever you want to do on top of this. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, appreciate any questions or comments that you guys have. Feel free to drop a comment below. That's it for this week. So. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next week.